Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Cecil here bringing us a video here today, bringing guys a Photoshop slash After Effects tour here today, showing guys how to make your own very cool Twitch alerts. Now, this is one of the things I've been asking quite a lot from a lot of individuals, um, or have been asking to do from quite a lot of individuals, and like, I think I killed it. I think we did pretty good on it. Of course, I just finished recording the video myself, just doing the intro for you guys, um, but it's kind of it's kind of crazy because at the first, um, well, of course, when I started learning this, this this morning at least, it was just like there's a few things I just couldn't find because no one just like talked about it or whatnot. So hopefully you find the things that you've been looking for in this video here today. Um, this video is actually also sponsored by AE Juice. Um, these individuals came to me about a month ago and when I was working on a lot of stream stuff for like After Effects and whatnot, they came to me and showed me this stuff right here. And it's actually way, way too cool to just pass up and not do, honestly. Um, just basically think of it as an asset pack of like really cool motion kind of stuff that would work for like logos, you know, starting soon screens, literally anything, honestly. I'm gonna you're probably gonna see me using a lot of this kind of stuff to kind of like, you know, make things look pretty and kind of things. Um, but it's really cool. Their project manager actually it comes with a free starter pack. So if you guys check the description down below right now, you'll see it says like free starter pack. Um, and you can just get basically the actual uh, starter pack of you know, a few little assets, uh, not a little, there are actually quite a bit of them in there, but also the actual um, project manager sort of plugin that makes it super, super easy for you guys to actually work in, like this right here. <laughs> All you gotta do is go to window, uh, AE pack manager three, and when it opens up, you simply just go, to, this is the starter pack right here for you guys. Um, so like, look at the little explosions, like it's kind of crazy. They even have text animations for like text. Ah, oh, yikes. Like this stuff right here, this stuff right here I was gonna have way too much fun with. Like this stuff being like starting soon. Like I, I'm gonna have way too much fun with this pack personally, but I think it's just really cool. This stuff comes in for free when you guys go ahead and just use the link down below. It's very, very dope. This is the uh, other stuff that you can actually purchase. Um, this is stuff that I personally use. Some of this stuff in the video, I use electricity and the one that's an experiment as well. But we'll do a quick scroll through this for you guys. You can see some of this stuff. It's really, really quality. It's really dope. And I honestly, I honestly highly suggest you guys checking this stuff out. It's just, it's one of those things where if you're like a motion designer or whatnot, it's one of those investments that'll last you guys a lifetime kind of thing. And I truly, truly, truly mean that. As you guys know, I don't take sponsor for stuff that I really care about. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll jump into first of all Photoshop, and then we'll run into After Effects, and we'll run back into Photoshop, and then run you guys into um, Streamlabs, and you guys hopefully will enjoy the video here today. With that being said, much love. I'll talk to you guys later. Since we you out, peace. All right, guys, so I'm going to basically start off in today's video on how to actually create your own sort of document size page here. So the document size that I'm personally working in or that I originally worked in, excuse me, was a simple 1920 by 1080, just like so. Um, I press create and then you have your obviously your basic sort of uh, background, right? So for me, the way I ended up getting this more, uh, more smaller size was basically using this as like, hey, if like just think about it as a way this is where the gameplay is and whatnot. How big do you want your alert to be? So essentially what I ended up doing was kind of like making my own little rectangle and whatnot. And kind of like saying, you know, where to size it out. Maybe that's too big or whatnot. Um, I'll just like fill it in really quick so you can just see, right? You can size it out, kind of figure out how, what size you, you really want to work with. And when you say like, hey, this is the kind of size that I want, right? You just drag it in the middle or somewhere around the middle. And you press the C on your keyboard, which is the crop tool. And then simply just crop around it. So if you want to actually design inside this bigger sort of 1920 by 1080 p um, you know, document size and be my guess, right? But just simply just move this into a, to a spot where, you know, it's, it's, it has a fair amount of, um, I guess you say breathing room, but this is where the document size you want to be working in just simply because it makes it really, really easy for uh, smaller sizes when it comes to like gift images, or if you ended up, you know, using your own hosting site to actually host a different sort of, um, uh, like an AVI or an, an MOV or whatnot, you know what I mean? So it'll be a lot more easier for the actual uh, sizing to be, you know, really useful in the sense, right? So you don't have to go beyond a certain size, which is like, I believe it's only like 20 megapixels or whatever on the, the Streamlabs hosting sites. That's why you got to use a, a certain GIFs and whatnot. We're well, not 20 megapixels. It's like whatever it's it's small anyway um but yeah so that's how i got my dimension size so that's that's how i basically be working inside in this one right here i'm just gonna really quickly just kind of go over the the pen tooling really because like i said the design really doesn't matter so i'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how i at least did it if you guys choose and you kind of like this style i'm gonna actually show you guys with the background the, you know what's behind it maybe so you can see a little more better yeah, right you know it looks pretty good um so what i ended up doing is just simply using the pen tool now for you if you're working with a theme this can be texturized this can be I don't know, liquidy. I don't know. You know what I mean? It can, it can have whatever the heck you guys want it to have, honestly. But in this sense here, all I ended up doing is using the pen tool and then just kind of pen tooling out this very cool, simple sort of, um, we did this for the overlay actually the other week, right? And I hold shift to make these really cool little, uh, perfect 45 degree cuts, right? And I'm holding shift to make a straight line and I'll just come up here. This is what I ended up doing. And I did, I wanted another, uh, cut right here. So I'm going to say, go up here. It's a little actually off, but 
It's because I actually, uh, I, what I ended up doing was shrink it down. So this cut here is going to follow it for the heck of it, right? I'm just going to go right here and then connect it. Just so you guys know, like I said, this is not really the, the portion I really want to show, but just the sense of just, if you guys really thought this was really cool, I'm going to show you guys. <clears throat> We're going to fill this in with black, right? So this is just simply what we have right here is this little black bar right here. And this is where the text should be laid out. So be mindful. Um, let's say if it's a donation, you're going to have to make sure it's more, I guess, you, uh, for a default size right because we're not using any coding where it comes to like javascript where you can actually kind of cut or or kind of uh how do you say um give you guys a correct sizing but I, I believe it's javascript where they can kind of like cut down on what the length of the actual message is so you just kind of be fair with the amount of default space that you're going to be having so for me i know i'm only probably only be using this for maybe like a donation even like a uh, excuse me like a subscription or a follow so just give enough space for the actual name to be and i believe like the max amount of characters you can have on twitch is like i don't know probably like around 15 or below it can probably be a little like probably like 12 i don't know but just be careful with the amount of space you're having so it just becomes uh, not a problem in the future right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead, double click on this, just throw on a nice little simple gradient. And the gradient that I believe I use for me personally, which is something around like this area rate, I don't know, let's say right here. Okay. So for this one here is just the black on the left hand side, pure black. And then on the right hand side here, this is the hex code 12151A. Press OK, press OK again, then press OK again. Right. So that's our first, our, our first little bar here, right here. Right. So. What I ended up doing is just kind of make it more techy. So in that sense here, what I'm going to really quickly do is just do this little, uh, this first icon bar so you just don't have to keep putting it up. But what I'm going to do is just going to simply go like this, pen tool this out just like so. You can do any shape. You can do whatever the heck you guys want. Be mindful once again. I'm going to say it once again because I feel like you just be like, yo, so said, what's the point of this? Um, really just to show you guys, you know, you can doubt, you can just do it here first and then work in After Effects. Um, so yeah, what I ended up doing for this here was I made a white. Um, little gradient here. And I believe I had this one already set to this really cool sort of off-white blue uh, D2D9F1 and the middle here is actually just E7EEFF uh, almost really close to white and on the far right side I believe it's D9E3FB so that's the little gradient there and uh, that can just stay just like so and I'll put the logo in after or whatever um, I'll, I'll most likely just use um, this alert box that I have in the beginning and I'm just gonna delete what I did for you guys just so I can make sure you know really quickly You know transitions and stuff like that. Um So yeah, now we have our bar done with the little uh, gradient overlay Then we have our little icon box right you can name it as so I'm just gonna group this together So you don't have to worry about this right now um, Let's turn it on really quickly too. Okay, cool So I'm gonna do just say for the heck of it I'm just gonna make it I'm gonna make it a little bit more different for the you know for the sake of whatever but I'm just gonna say, you know, in these little cuts here, you can have a little bit more fun and add like these really cool, you know, bits of color in. Um, I'm just gonna add like a cool pink this time because I feel like pinks or that reddish pink is like one of the coolest colors I feel like ever. Um, right? I think it looks pretty cool. And you can do the same thing maybe on the bottom here, right? I'm just basically really working with the pen tool, really, really being rough and kind of, you know, I guess you would say non, um, I have no real thought through it i'm just kind of like adding stuff and stuff and kind of adding some stuff for like more of a techie feel um and it kind of feels cool so i'm gonna say hey i'll add in this color here again right just like so so i'll end up doing just because i don't know uh right click fill path drop down contents color that's how you choose your color press okay just like so and then i believe um we'll have maybe this one maybe we can have this one here complement this little icon box right here and they'll make it this that cool gradient but from before right and then on the far right side here maybe we can do um no let's actually do this entire thing so let's actually take this entire thing and make it do like this i'm just trying to be different from what i did before just for the sake of of showing you guys it can be fun and random and right you know what i mean so I'll just fill this in this is already has the actual gradient overlay onto it that looks pretty cool and that can literally just be your box so Honest to God, like I said, like it's just as simple as just kind of figuring something out. If you have a different theme, maybe if you have like, uh, for just sake of context, like a Naruto theme, you can have like this be a scroll, and then you can have the scroll be like a simple little asset, right? And then you can have like a really cool scroll kind of, um, you know, plane, you know, or texture, and then have that roll out. That'd be kind of fun, right? So I'm just kind of give you guys just different ideas and whatnot, but um, just be mindful. It's just like as simple. And, and don't worry too much about this, but I'm gonna move this into After Effects, at least show you guys the process of creating it into an actual gift, into an uh, actual uh, Twitch alert afterwards. So I'm gonna throw this inside, but I'm, like I said before, I'm gonna use this right here, which is the one I already made before. And it's, it's nothing really that much different, just literally just a different um, cutout, you know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is just jump this into After Effects right now, and let's get this thing going. <laughs> 
All right, guys, so before you hop in, uh, to After Effects, of course, make sure you guys save your actual PSD under somewhere you can definitely find it at. I just saved mine on my desktop as alert bar. So I'm going to end up doing for me is I'm going to go to After Effects here. I'm going to go to File, uh, Import, right? I'm going to go to Import File, right? Just like so. And on my desktop, like I said before, I'm going to type in the word alert box. That's what it's called. Dot PSD. Press Import. Now, for the record, a lot of people say, can't you like do this inside After Effects? Um, for sure. But I'm just so comfortable in just doing it like this for some reason where I just design it, uh, Photoshop and move it into After Effects just because simply I don't really know the tools as well as I know Photoshop wise. And if I want to add textures and stuff like that, just for the simple sake of being comfortable, just be mindful. Like the entire first step is all about you, what your theme wants to be. And this step right here is more or less what you probably want to know. So uh, import kind of if you're importing, of course, from a PSD, make sure you do composition, retain layer sizes, and then also make your layer options um, editable layer styles, right? Press OK. <clears throat> so once you have that open, you see it right here on your actual file projects right here. You just want to simply just double click on the word uh, that actually has a word composition here. So alert box. So now you're going to have this right here. So I made sure I lay my uh, background layer delete. So we, of course, what in an actual uh, Twitch alert, you don't want to have a background. You want to have it be transparent. And so with that being said, you want to make sure that this is no longer be showing. So make sure you, of course, take that off. Now, also make sure you have this toggled. Because if not, it's going to be black as well. Still, you're going to be really, really confused. So make sure you guys also turn this on, which is a transparency grid, which will make sure allow you guys to know if there's anything ever, I guess, not transparent, right? I'm going to zoom, uh, zoom in for a second. So I'm just going to do a very simple sort of uh, like two tick kind of thing, right? I'm just going to simply make the actual icon box come up to show my logo. And I'm going to make the actual rest of it come out. And then we'll, of course, time the actual text and stuff being presented to us. And I believe the actual, uh, how do you say, the composition settings should be around 13 seconds. I'm going to say 13 seconds is where I believe the, uh, I think the actual default Twitch alert sounds is 12 seconds. So this is me not doing any JavaScript. So we're only being really, really working with, um, if we need to change anything, uh, is CSS and HTML, if we ever have to change any like thing when it comes to like moving the text around or whatever, right? So when it comes to JavaScript, you, this is where you probably would figure out how to actually do all of your motion and how much timing is needed for text and whatnot. But for the sake of not having to worry about that, just kind of start your animation at, you know, whatever frames, but end it at around 13 or 12 to make sure the around when the actual text goes away for the default text um twitch alert i'm trying to make sure i'm as clear as possible that it's at around 13 or 12 seconds so i'm gonna press ok and that is now that so i'm gonna make sure this is also coming out here all the way right <clears throat> cool so that with that being said 13 second um composition settings is how you do that also if you didn't know how to get to that table just simply right click composition settings and then just change it right here duration so this is 13 seconds these are milliseconds make sure this is not 13 this right here if you change this 13 that's 13 minutes the same want to make sure you're right here in that middle section um okay cool frame rate 30 by the way so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna firstly just take this little icon bar and if you really want to you can just delete this background you don't really need to keep it there um you simply just take this icon bar what i'm gonna end up doing i'm gonna say hey i want to i want to kind of start this animation to be around like one second right because we don't have to really have that much empty space um because you know, you know the longer it takes for you to actually get the animation started is a longer duration it is for the text kind of go away or come in and whatnot right so i don't say one second is perfectly fine so if you guys wanted to learn how to get your position into a, one spot to another, you just simply just press P on your keyboard, which is the uh, of course shortcut for the word um, position here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position where, without moving it yet, right, right at that one second mark where I want to kind of have it be in this area at one second. I'm gonna take this uh, keyframe it just like so. And then at zero frames per second, we're going to get this out of frame. Now, this is another reason why I ended up cutting my um, PSD down, my, my actual uh, working document size down. Is so that this can look like it's almost popping up in the actual scene of whatever gameplay you're working on, whatever your your stream and whatnot. So it kind of pops into view without it kind of you probably seeing it coming up all the way from like the bottom of the screen flying up. Now, if you wanted that to happen, obviously you just make your document size that big, which is 1920 by 1080, by the way, right? <laughs> so now that I have this, if I just quickly play this, of course, you're just going from point A to point B. Very, very simple, very actually static as well. And to get rid of that sort of like static movement is easy ease. So to work, uh, the way to easy ease is these keyframes here, right? So with these little uh, stopwatches and stuff like that, moving the position from point A to point B, you create keyframes, of course. So with keyframes here, if you guys did not know, if you press U on your keyboard, by the way, if you ever need to find your keyframes, let's say you close down your layer and you're like, crap, how do I get back to it? And you're like, where's position? Um, or whatever affects anything, whatever is keyframed. If you press U on your keyboard, it auto automatically excuse me, shows you where your keyframes are. So in my sense, these two things right here are my keyframes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these 
<laughs> excuse me, I'm gonna right click them. I'm gonna go to keyframe assistance and then I'm gonna go to easy ease. And when my easy ease is selected, they turn into more of like an hourglass feature. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my speed graph here. Uh, this is my edit, uh, my graph editor and make sure you're on speed graph. Okay. So this is the big kicker for a lot of people when they get kind of confused, um, because if you're in your speed graph here, you're actually not default on this. So you make sure you change from value graph to speed graph. Okay. So with that being said, then you have your two keyframes and this little very simple arc here. So this arc is representing that very quick or excuse me, that very static kind of movement. Right. So if you guys wanted to play around with that and kind of mess around how fast things can happen, what I would like to do is say, Hey, in the very beginning, I want this to be super, super fast and then just come in, um, or excuse me, come in super, super fast, kind of slow, slow down, but it's still one second. So it's not going to show too much, but for the sake of just kind of like, see how like kind of subtle that looks a little more, a little more finesse, I guess you would say, I think it looks personally pretty good. So I'm just going to turn that off now, just kind of get back to my timeline, just simply just click back on the actual graph editor. So let me have that first very simple flying animation, which looks really cool, very smooth. Now what I'm gonna end up doing is do the same exact thing for my bar here. I'm gonna make it kind of slide out this way, right? Um, or camera, yeah, that way, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go frame ahead. <laughs> so basically right where I kind of finished off my little icon bar here, uh, so my icon bar coming up. So I'm gonna go to my bar here. I'm gonna go to maybe like, let's say like we want this to take no more than like two seconds. Okay, we'll say two seconds is our, our no more. So this is at two seconds. We want it to be still framed at this point right here. That way your text can be showing right now. It'll last for about eight seconds. Um, and then you can just go, it'll go away, right? So also, uh, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> what I want to also add is if anyone does know the whole JavaScript and how to work with text, if anyone wants to post an actual, uh, maybe like a template people can use, um, that'd be super, super, really, really helpful, honestly, for anyone who's really wanted to do that. So we, let's just use this video as a learning experience for everyone, honestly. Um, just for the sake of, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? So I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and personally make sure we go to our position, which is on our keyboard, excuse me. And then we're going to take this little stopwatch. We're going to click on it. So that way we know for sure at two seconds, it's going to be in this spot. So I'm going to go to about one second. Like, like I said before, and this is done, right? I want to take this position of the bar. I'm just going to simply just click on it, hold shift, by the way, it'll keep it on the same axis. So if I hold shift and click and move it, it'll move it perfectly on that same, like straight little line axis, right? Move it all the way out of frame, just like so. <clears throat> so if you want to quickly render it out and just see what's happening, you're going to get the fly in and that little sort of like bar coming in as well. So of course, what you probably suggested is the uh, key, uh, easy ease keyframe. And we're going to simply go to the uh, graph editor once again, and we're going to make this kind of do the same exact thing. I'm going to say really, really fast and then kind of smooth and kind of like, you know, slower in the end. So that's what basically moving these things are. So if you guys want to get more context, you take this little yellow bar here, this little yellow line, which actually ends up being an anchor point or, or an, uh, a, uh, how do you call it? A handle, excuse me, right? You want to take and just move this basically as far as you can to the left, which is around maybe a, a full uh, square. But of course you start in the half of the square. So it's going to be a full square basically because as you end off in the half square here as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little bar here or the little handle here, and move this a little bit up, just about maybe like, you know, honestly a centimeter or two up. And then you want to take this graph editor, turn it off again. So you can see it'll render it out really quickly. It'll play again, just like so. And that kind of comes in and I believe it moved. It did move or is it just how that works? It looks like it moved for some reason for me. No. Okay. I thought it moved. I like uh, the actual bar moved up and down. That kind of looks really weird. Does it not? That's just how uh, I'm making sure it didn't move. Let me actually check the actual graph editor. I actually don't know. Um, no, it didn't move. It just looks like that because all the cuts that I did, it kind of, kind of gives it that feel that is moving because of this bar right here and it goes off again right here. So I thought it looked like it moving, um, but it's not moving, but that looks good. And I'm good with that. Um, as, as long as I'm not tripping, I don't think I'm tripping. Okay. Uh, all right. So now that it's basically done, that's almost the entire animation part of this personal video here, right? So you have your, of course, your icon bar coming in and then your bar coming in, it lasts all the way until around 12 seconds or 13 seconds. But what you want to make sure you do is you make sure you want to close it as well. So the way I'm going to close it, I'm going to also add the cool little effects, by the way, from a juice, um, in a bit, uh, in a minute here, excuse me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take these keyframes here copy and paste them. So I'm going to press control C on my keyboard. I'm going to do it a few times. So I can make sure it's definitely copied on my clipboard. I'm going to go to around, this is one second. So I'm going to go to around, around uh, right before 12 seconds and I'm going to press control V. It'll give me these keyframes here, just like so. 
And what you want to do is because if you leave it just like this, what's going to happen here is it's going to fully go in and then slowly start going back. So you don't want to do that. So you actually fix that is you simply just take the first key or excuse me, the last keyframe right here, control C. <clears throat> you put it right behind this keyframe here, which is the one you made a copy of in the beginning, right? So I'm going to just put it right behind it, one keyframe behind it, and then control V. And that'll keep it nice and steady all the way until, um, you know, 12 seconds here. So it's going to keep it nice and firm in the position that you need to, you know, have it last or whatever, right? And then it'll go away. But you need to also fix this in a second because you see how it just quickly goes back like that. All you got to do is simply take this second keyframe here now. It's the second now. You take this, move this down here. You take the last one, move this up here. And that'll assure you guys um, that it'll actually go in uh, just, just as simple as it came out, right? So uh, let's make sure this renders out. And then it should just simply just go right in now. Perfect. So obviously the same things want to happen for the actual icon box here. So control C, we'll start this off right around here. Control V, we're going to take this last one here. Control C, put it behind the keyframe here. Control V, and then we're going to go ahead and take these and swap them now. So this one goes here. This one goes here, right? So now I'm going to go back again. As you see, renders out and comes in. You wait for the text. This is where, hey, someone donated a thousand dollars, right? Um, and there you go. So if you guys actually want it to be more, you know, the actual bar comes out first and then the, the actual, I, uh, how do you say the, um, the icon box, right? We're going to take the bar, just move this further back. So you want this to come out first and then this comes down. I believe that's a little more accurate to how I want it to be. Now, you see how the bar is actually going away around 11 seconds. That might be a problem for, for the sake of it. If I need to go back in the compositions and re-render it at 14 seconds, then we do that as well. But just keep in mind, like I said before, it should be around 12, 13 seconds. So this might be a little bad in the sense. So I might actually have to, you know, go over here and go to like 14 seconds here and then extend this, which I'm just going to do for the sake of the video that way. We kind of have it be more around that 12 second mark originally. So when the, it fades away, the text fades away. Um, we're not, we're not just getting lost. It's just not the text is not getting lost, right? So not that being said, we're pretty cool and we're pretty good to go. So I'm gonna show you guys these really cool little fun things now. This is the this is a fun part for me. So when you actually download the uh, the manager, it's in your Windows. So if you want to go to AE Juice uh, Pack Manager three, now they gave me a license, of course. So I do have different. Um, I have other ones. So this is the starter pack, by the way. The starter pack has a few things like this right here is actually pretty cool. These are still pretty cool, honestly, for a starter pack. Like this stuff right here. These can make for some really cool little pop-ups. So you want maybe if you want your actual um, how do you say your 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 Twitch alert or whatever just to be a simple little burst like this, like just kind of burst out and then show the the text itself. That can be cool in itself because you just of course in uh how do you say your streamlabs you can still change your text around. You know what I mean? You just have to be the default text, which is a uh, yikes. But you see this kind of stuff here. It's very, very cool. Circles, black, uh, little funnel, just these. I can't explain how cool it is because for me personally, I just see a couple, you know, a couple tens of videos. You know what I mean? Like this kind of stuff. What the heck? I know they had this though. But this is all starter packs. What the heck? Look at that. How cool can that be? If you throw this in first and then just have like a very simple sidebar, how we did with the actual bar right here, kind of just slide out. Right, but more in this kind of style here, more like almost like a, just an outline. I'm giving you guys so many ideas. If I saw this, I, I probably would have done that first. Um, anyway, we're gonna throw into we're gonna excuse me go into the uh, liquid elements, which personally is the one the license they also gave me as well. <laughs> I believe this was ninety nine dollars, but it comes with a crap ton of things. And I, one I use was electricity, so I'm gonna use the same one. Before I use that one, I'm gonna use the the one I use for the for the the icon box to kind of burst. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click on the word import. And it's just simply import. As you can see, it gives you this folder here. It says do not edit. So make sure you guys do not edit it. I'm going to go ahead and X this out. And now I'm going to just simply just take this, zoom out a little bit. I'm going to make this a little bit more smaller. Okay. I'm going to throw this behind. Now let's play with it a little bit. I need to find out where the icon box comes up right around here. So this is where I want this to be. Okay. So now it should kind of come up. And be surrounded here. I'll make sure I move this around a little bit more. Okay, so now I have I just want to make sure I kind of place it in the right spot. I'm gonna drag this below my icon box. Now this actually can be replaced with the one that I showed you guys that was free. So this is gonna be replaced just the same as that thing that's happening right now. Just do this one with um uh this right here, right? This explosion, right? That works perfectly fine. Uh delete this or get rid of this, right? So it's just gonna be a nice little swoop. And I'm going to change this to uh, orange, actually. I'm going to change the little thing right here to orange. So the way I, the way I personally did that, I don't know if there's actually a thing that are setting to fix it. Oh, I can show you guys that too really quickly. Um, Windows, 
uh, this pack right here. Excuse me, like my ears like weirdly poppy. I have no idea, so I keep like trying to yawn. Um, anyway, if you guys actually click on this here, uh, I'm just gonna go here for this one, I believe. So I, I don't know if all of them have it, but this one personally has this one. So I'm gonna go to, let's just say the combo ones, right? I'm gonna click on this. If you guys click on those settings, it actually shows you a different, uh, they have different like layers. So you can have rough edges. The pixelate one looks super, super cool. You can make some really cool pixel kind of banners or some banners, pixel kind of animations very, very easily with this pack here. So I don't know. I think this is honestly way, way, way too cool. And I think they're way too cool to be giving this kind of stuff because <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use it, honestly. So like I said before, we're gonna change the color of this right here. This first little, this little, little explosion thing because everything is orange. This is blue. So the way I personally ended up doing it was I took the hue and saturation. So the way I brought it up really quickly is under effects and presets. Just type in hue and you get hue and saturation. You just simply click this, drag this onto experiment one. And I'm just gonna drag this up a little bit more. I wanna kinda get the orange and the thing in place, but I'll just change it to orange. I'm gonna take the master hue here and just kinda just take this and kind of move this around until I find like an orange. I believe this is as orange as it's gonna get, maybe like right here. And then the saturation up a little bit more, right? How close is this? It's a little bit more lighter, so it should be a little more yellower. Yellower? Yellow. Like that. And I'll say like this. We're just trying to get as close as possible for now. And I'm gonna say maybe that's pretty good, right? It's a little more darker. For the sake of the video, I think that's that's okay. I'll fix it um, for the sake of you guys, for the video and whatnot. But this is pretty cool. Now you're starting to get a little more cooler kind of just features to it, a little more characteristic to it, or characters to it, excuse me. Um, also, I just realized that we didn't fix the, um, it comes in really slow at the end here, or goes away really slow. We want this to be really quickly, uh, excuse me, go away really quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these keyframes and move these in. And this can help me eliminate also the, the timeline issue that I was saying before. But this right here should be like this. Right, so now it goes away a little more quicker, right? So when you see this comes up to the end, it'll go away really, really quick, right? A little more quicker, because you don't want it to be, you know, last forever. Uh, okay, so you have a little fun little liquid kind of stuff coming in first, kind of gets engulfed there. Now what I personally do here is I'm gonna go back into this pack, go to Windows, go to AE Juice Manager. Now, like I said, whatever free ones work in your aspect, just let it be, but I have this really cool electricity. I think it was number two. I'm gonna import this one. Okay, you see how, like, look how easy that is. It's kind of scary how easy that is. Um, I'm gonna take the rotation tool here, rotate this, holding shift, and I'm gonna make this a little more smaller. Excuse me, click on this, make this a little more smaller. Once again, mm -mm. okay, my clicks are horrendous. Please make it a little more smaller, okay? We're gonna zoom in, and we're gonna say, like, right here, I'm gonna make it a little bit more smaller again. Okay, I'll say that right about there. So if I just kind of have this be like this, it'll look like it, the electricity is kind of pushing the actual bar, right? And ooh, okay, okay, it looks pretty nice. So right, I'm also add another one. So I'm gonna simply just press Control C, Control V, right, and move this up here as well. And I'll move the timing a little bit more because it's gonna be a little more uh, after. So this is gonna come in first, and then this part's gonna finish it off. This should be a little more down here, and I think that is pretty badass. Honestly, I'm, yes, down for that. Render this out really quickly? Yes, okay, I'm down, see, I'm like, oh dude, I can't personally wait until I can use this to like its full potential, Um, but I'm very happy with this. I think it looks really cool, really dope, and it definitely works out. So, here comes the hard part. Not really the hard part, but just more paying attention part, okay? Because you're probably gonna make this mistake. So, uh, to what the, uh, the way to render this out is you either go to composition, right? And then go to add to render queue. So either um, do that or press control M on your keyboard, just like so. Uh, please, why, did, why, just why? Why is it when I press record, I swear it was working perfectly fine. Control M for me just does not work when like I'm recording for some reason. Okay, composition, we're gonna add a render queue. Okay, all right. So render settings, you're at best, you're at you know 30 frames a second, you have to change anything in here. Personally, I did not, so I'm gonna press okay. So I'm gonna go to output module here on format. This is what you pay attention to. So I was doing TIF files for this for some reason. Now, for whatever reason, if you're a GIF or excuse me, if your um, if your alert needs to have a background, then you want to use TIF sequence, right? 
And then of course, you, whatever background you have, make sure it's obviously enabled and checked invisible, right? But if you guys do not want it to have a background, which is my problem that I had for some reason, I just couldn't register in my head. You wanna make sure you use PNG sequence. Make sure you click on PNG sequence. The PNG sequence allows you guys, of course, have a, you know, it'll be a PNG also inside Photoshop for when you have to render it out as a gift, which of course, PNGs are only real, um, but I think besides other one, uh, one other format that gives you guys a transparent background because JPEG does not and TIF does not, right? So you want to make sure you have that uh, checked. Um, excuse me. Uh, you know, clicked on. You want to go to your channels and change it from RGB to RGB plus alpha. Now, for me, I personally probably do not need to do that. Um, for the sake of I don't actually have a background. Um. But just do it. Make sure you guys do that because uh, that'll also, of course, make sure you have a transparent background being enabled when you're actually um, rendering. So once you have that, you press simply OK. And then you want to get your output here. And I have mine. Um, we're going to go to desktop. I'm just going to make a new folder. So I'm going to end up going in my desktop, going in. I can't show you my desktop for you know other reasons. I don't want to show anything I, I shouldn't show at the moment. But I'm, gonna, I'm making a new folder. I'm going to call it bar 5. And I'm going to now just jump into that folder. Right. And I made a new folder. Call it bar 5. And simply just going to call it what do you can call whatever you guys want but once you have that you're inside the folder make sure you're inside the folder because otherwise you're gonna have a lot of pngs on your desktop and or wherever you saved it um you press save you press render and you just render that baby out so we're gonna throw this into photoshop and guys uh finish you guys off with the cool little um you know the the, the part you guys have been waiting for all right guys so easy part comes in right now so I'm in my bar five folder. When you guys notice, you're gonna have uh, whatever you name your folder here. You just simply just double click on it, and inside this folder is actually gonna be all the PNGs needed from that one step, from that zero to uh, 14 second timeline range. So for me, it was 407 frames at 30 frames per second. So we want to make sure you select the one that first, that first um, one right here. You see how that's actually a background layer? You don't want that because actually in the gift itself, it's gonna render out with a background layer, and you don't want that. So you basically, excuse me, you basically, excuse me, drag and click on the one that actually is um transparent fully transparent but before you do that you can just take the first one right i'm just gonna take the first one for now um and if the first one's also transparent doesn't matter whatsoever just take the first one take it and drag it to the uh this little darker gray spot of your timeline or your uh your your photoshop and just drag it in just drop it in and this will give you guys the perfect dimension that you're going to obviously need and then with this being said you want to go to your window you want to go to timeline and then once you have this first little layer in here and whatnot, just kind of start you guys off. We're going to simply go into, uh, I believe it's image. It's not image. It's definitely layer, video layers, new video uh, layer from file. And this right here should be uh, bar five, right? And then we're in bar five. Click back into the same exact thing before. Like I said before, don't click on this one. We're going to click on the one that first starts off with a transparent. Press open. And then what you want to do is delete this other one right here, right below it, just like so. So now what's going to happen is if you want to press play or space bar on Photoshop, you actually get in Photoshop the thing you just animated inside After Effects um, in Photoshop itself, right? So, <laughs> excuse me, the very easy part comes in next. I'm just going to show you guys the full the full thing rendered out. <sighs> All right, it's going to be nice and smooth. Very cool. I think that's super, super sick. I'm very excited for this. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press uh, Control, Alt, Shift, S, right? You don't have to know all that. All you have to do is go to file, uh, please file export safe for web, right? So once you have this right here, you want to make sure your settings are as file that you guys see right here for me. These are the, the sort of settings that I personally ended up using that kind of worked the best for me. Um, you can play around with the GIF files, like I said, and also let me make sure I kind of reference this again one more time. If you guys personally can find a way to host a video of higher quality, like a dot MOV, a dot AVR or whatever you want to use that you can host it and kind of have that be the link that you put inside Streamlabs. If you guys don't know what I mean by that, just keep this in mind that when you go into Streamlabs, you'll be like, oh, I see what you're talking about because this will save you a crap ton of trouble. And if you guys want to get the best quality possible, then that's it's one of those things you have to actually do. But for GIFs, since they're not that big of files right here, and Streamlabs gives you up to about two megapixels or whatever to work with. It makes it super easy for you guys to work with GIFs and, um, and, and Streamlabs. It's just one of those things that kind of how it works. So make sure you go to GIF right here in your, in your drop settings. Um, it's probably on like default JPEG. We're just changing to GIF. Uh, selective, Diffusion, 256 color. Make sure it's not on 128. 128 gives you a little bit grainy kind of feel, but uh, 256 will give you the most kind of clearest kind of um, comp, comp uh, what is it called? Composed colors, sure. Um, dither at 88%. If you put this all the way up, I feel like it just uh, doesn't really do much for me. I believe 88 is where I kind of got. Uh, if I put it all the way up, you can kind of see it. Let me see if I zoom in. Ah, uh, 
uh, I guess it would, it would be more or less when you actually render it out. You kind of see the difference. So 88 for me personally worked. If you want to go 100, then try 88. Go for it. Uh, the actual dither does the uh, the amount of dither. That's just what it says. And personally for me, if you don't put it on all, you can see it looks really, really weird. Why is it not, it's not showing a difference right now? Maybe because I didn't have... For my other project that I did for the preview, it was it had a little bit of a different texture and whatnot. But for me, dither 88. If it's different for you, or if you know something not to use dither, maybe just let me know what it does for sure, for sure, in this case right here. But for me, these are things that I use. I'm gonna press save now. And then once you press save, it's gonna ask you where to save it at. I'm gonna go to my desktop here, right? And I'm gonna go to bar five, and I'm gonna go to my alert bar. I'm just gonna save this as alert uh, follow, right? Press save. And it'll save as a uh, .gif. So if you go into your, uh, where's my file right here? Alert bar, bar five. The file's not gonna be right here and that's gonna be your GIF. And it's gonna be a nice short amount of size and you're gonna throw this into uh, Streamlabs. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this really quickly because it can be tricky. Um, hopefully this part here is not too complicated for you guys and or uh, my explanation is not crappy enough, but we'll give it a shot right here right now. So I'm gonna jump in to uh, Streamlabs actually logged in to actually put this uh, effect into use or what we just made, you know what I mean? All right, guys, so we're inside uh, Streamlabs now, right? We're, of course, in our desktop. Of course, we're under the actual widgets category, and we're under alert box, which is where you want to change and get your alert box going. So what you want to do is, of course, launch the URL here. Launch this URL here, and on the right-hand side, I kind of already have it kind of like squished in together, so you guys can all see it at one point. And I already have the word, if I just kind of like click on the, the test subscriber, you guys can see what happens. It shows you guys a preview of what's going on in your uh, alerts and whatnot, right? Which is really cool, really intuitive, and really cool for uh, Streamlabs to kind of do that for you guys. Um, so we're gonna be using that to kind of, you know, gauge and whether or not things need to be changing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is of course, throw in our actual GIF, okay? So before you do that, make sure your layout, as you can see, it's GIF and then the text under it or GIF. If you say GIF, I actually don't know if I like you. Um, okay, so we're gonna go to the middle one here. So you wanna make sure you have the actual image and the text in front of it. That's the layout that you wanna have. And that way, so if I just quickly just press save settings, you can just see what happens here, move up. Test subscriber, you will see that the text is now above the image, which is what we want personally because we have it more like a back plane and we want the text to be, of course, in front of it. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead. Also, I forgot to mention, you see how it says just subscribe, right? So if you just, I, I don't know why I keep pressing save settings. I just kind of have a habit of doing that, right? You see how it just says it's gonna be your name or whatever name happens just to, uh, just to subscribe to you. It's gonna say the name and then just subscribe. You can actually change it to have it not say just subscribe. And this is one thing I probably should have done. And and so you put the words just subscribe or recent follow or something like that inside the actual box itself when you actually create it. So that's something I probably should have mentioned um, because I just didn't think about it and just literally until now. So maybe if you guys want to make your box and kind of also have like a really cool spot to put like what it is about or what the description of the box is, that's probably a pretty good thing to probably do. Uh, let's just go here, please. And then here, there we go. So. Now that I have that out of the way, you want to make sure your text animation is kind of like around at least somewhat right of a of a of an idea of what your actual text is. So for me, I'm gonna go with pulse because I feel like it's the most average one for me here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and go change media. I'm gonna go to where it says drop and upload, and I'm gonna click on this, and I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in that alert file that we actually rendered out in Photoshop, of course, and I'm gonna open that up. So if you don't see it, make sure you guys go to where it says my uploads and click on all files, and you'll make sure you'll see your gift. So I'm gonna copy my URL, just like so, press select. Now, this is where I was referring to in the past where I was like, hey, if you have a site that hosts your dot a, uh, .avi or dot .motion, this is what I meant, right? This is this is the GIF file that actually Streamlabs personally hosts because it actually has, uh, you know, it can host GIFs because it's not that big of a file. So this is what I'm referring to. If you have a site that you can get the actual .mov file on, this is where you would copy the URL and then you would throw it actually into your uh, uh, enable custom HTML CSS. You would put it right into your HTML here and you would throw it right under the image div. You would throw it right here. And that's what's gonna give you guys that um, really, I guess, higher quality if you can find, and like I said, find your own way to host your, your AVIs and dot AVIs or dot motion blur, uh, dot MOVs. Um, so if you guys wanna have, if you guys have any input on that personally, maybe just leave it in the comment section for everyone else to listen to. Um, with that being said, that's that. I'm gonna disable this for a second, so we're gonna be in that in a second, maybe. Um, okay, so now that I have this done, I'm gonna quickly just go ahead and just press save settings. And I'm gonna go ahead and test the subscriber and it should be our box here. So now we're finding the issue is the text is too big. Obviously, we're gonna go ahead and just take our, take our text size, throw that down about maybe 28 or so. I changed my font already to NR, NTR. It was just the least crappy font in my opinion. Um, you can't upload your own fonts, I don't believe either. So that's kind of 
it's kind of whack but ncr is what i ended up using so what you're going to do now is of course change your text color now if you have the hex code which is in photoshop if you want to quickly just kind of go into photoshop here find the hex code that you use for you whatever highlight color you use you take this you copy it and then you just throw it simply inside excuse me um this little hex code pattern right here right so now I'll press save settings once again <clears throat> and i'm gonna click on the word test subscriber and let's see what happens here and i think that works so the sizing itself works really really well for me and the th uh, one thing i'm personally finding out right now is that the actual streamlabs size uh the st actual streamlabs um i believe time frame is actually 10 seconds so for some reason that's why i was like if you guys are probably wondering why uh, the rest of the animation didn't finish the fadeaway is fine and whatnot but if you want to actually have the animation finish through just keep your uh, after effects settings on the composition settings 10 seconds i was personally wrong but i did say i wasn't incredibly sure I, I apologize for not knowing but i know now it's 10 seconds so just keep that frame or keep the composition settings around that mark right there um but right now i think that's pretty good i like where it's at but the text itself needs to be moved over to the right a little bit more it's a little bit too close to the left and i want it to be a little more centered so this is a really cool thing about Streamlabs and being able to actually edit and customize your HTML. So I'm gonna enable this once again. So if you already had to change your 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 uh, if you want to change your URL, which you wanted to host from your own site or whatnot, that's where this would go. But we want to go ahead and move the text over more or less to the to the right side. Now I already know how much I want to move it over because um, I already tested it out. However, what you want to go is you want to go to the line 30 in the CSS group here. You want to go where it says text align center you want to click around there and you want to press space or excuse me enter what that'll do is it'll create a new line which is line 31 which is the line we would need to actually be uh adding into this little alignment fix so i already have it actually copy and pasted inside my um uh my, my next monitor here and what it, what it is is simply just uh control v right backspace that a little bit right so it's margin and then hyphenated left and then i have it seven percent i personally already know i believe it should be around eleven percent um, to move over a little bit more. So it's basically moving the margin more or less 11% uh, towards the left hand side. Uh, now, of course, if you need to move it over to the right hand side, you just simply just switch that and move it to the right hand side, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press save settings. And what should happen is very, very simply press test subscriber. It should be moved over quite a bit more and be fairly centered to where I wanna be. And I think that is basically it. So that is basically how I would personally create these things. Like I said before, I don't know coding too much and nor do I know how to host. I just don't know how to do it, but hopefully someone in the comment section can help us out. Um, but hopefully this gives you more insight on how to create your own cool, uh, you know, your own cool uh, Twitch alerts, right? So with that being said, I am done. This tutorial was very long, very tedious, because I just didn't know exactly how to do everything. But hopefully this video here clears it up for you guys as I basically just kind of summed up everything I learned in six hours in this video here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I just want to say really quickly as well, thank you guys so very much for the support. This month has actually been quite insane. If you guys check my social blade, just the, the viewers, the subscribers, everything. It's just like, whoa. Like I appreciate you guys so, so, so very much. And I just want to let you guys know that for sure. With that being said again, um, I have no idea what the 200 likes uh, video secret download is going to be, but I do know for sure. Very, very, uh, very thankful for uh, AE Juice for, of course, watching this video and giving you this really cool assets. Like I said before, you can download the manager uh, on their site, just straight up on their site, and then it gives you a really cool starter pack for you guys to go ahead and go off of. Um, okay, I'm not going to say with that being said, though, this time, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys go with thank you guys so very much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Sesso HQ out. Do not get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Peace.